did it again. I got startled because I thought it was a fish coming into view. <laughs> and it was just the, the arm. Just getting triggered. Thank you. Thanks, guys. That's sample 92. Sebastian, when you have a chance, could you share a little bit about your role as a data logger and like what kind of information are you recording? Yes. Um, so as a data logger, I pretty much record all major observations of animals, geology, um, archaeology, and the movement of the ROVs, as well as track all of our samples that we do collect and make sure they're in the right compartments and have proper descriptions of them written down. I also take screenshots of everything we see for later analysis. Nice, thank you for that insight. Of course. And then we had a question. Um, a viewer was asking, do rocks qualify as life forms in the Hawaiian culture? And so, um, yeah, I'd like to answer that. So um, from a Hawaiian perspective, we view rocks, pohaku, as animate, meaning that they contain life, um, as does water, as does our mountains, as does uh, the pele, the lava that creates the rocks, the pohaku. And so um, we consider the world that we live in, the Hawaiian archipelago, to be our ancestor and the older islands that we are currently in, Papahanao Mokoakea, as the older ancestors of us. We call them our Kupuna Islands, our ancestor islands. And so um, our belief is that yes, we are genealogically connected to the islands, to the um, organisms that make their home um, in the water and on the, on the land. Um, and that we are just a, a, a component of the natural world, understanding our place in it, um, not as dominating, but as an integral component as are all life forms. Um, we all need each other. And, you know, the, the thing is the world can sustain itself without us as humans. The world will go on, but we, cannot sustain ourselves without the world, the natural environment. And so, um, you know, that, that relationship and that connection is deep and um, respectful and just um, knowing our place in the world really helps us to take care of it with aloha. That was beautifully said, Malia. Thank you for adding that and all your insight that you provide us and all of our viewers. So the two large sponges you just saw were a large colophycus, which is the one on the stem, and a large faraday, which is the one that looked a little bit like a fan. We've got a really good question about the lights on Hercules, and someone's wondering if the lights are pure white or if there are like added colors um, that kind of enhance what we're looking at down here. I don't know the spectrum off the top of my head. 
but I think it's pretty well rounded. I'm looking at these rocks and they look, they look blue good. Blue light travels farther, so Whoa. it gives you a lot of blue light. We like blue light. I bet that rock fell over. Oh yeah. And Looks it like killed it. the, the Or the sponge, sponge falling over moved the rock. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> um, Can we take that rock sample? <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, these rocks do look more angular. If we could, um, Derek, can we position ourselves to pause? Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Bridge nav. All stop, please. Oh. There's like this one. I don't think we're stopping at this oh, exact oh, oh, spot. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I, I mean, we're not going to have all that much room if we're working around that, the sponge. I, okay, yeah. I was just looking at what we got, so I was, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> what looks good? Anything? Uh, uh, I, I think, yeah, I think, I mean, anywhere we've got, like, we've got angular stuff, so. Yeah, uh, like this. That's, that's something. Um. Yeah, that one's kind of flat. That one looks manganese-y. Um, I'm not yeah, now that I Yeah, now that I said that, I don't see any here that are good. <laughs> All right, come so back hop, up. skip, and a jump, if you don't mind. Yep. There's this one. That one looks pretty angular. There's that one too. That one. But try for this one. If possible. Please. Yep. And Thank this you. will go in the starboard box, correct? Yeah. This is the first one you circled? Is this the yes. still the one you want? Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. That looks great. Good yeah, that looks like a good one. There's some, yeah, there's some flat spots on it. Right. And we want flat spots? Yeah, we want like angular. I mean, there's going to be a manganese coating on it. Mm -hmm. um, but it, look, it doesn't look like it's all manganese like the last couple were. Yeah. Thank you, Pohaku. Mahalo kanaloa. Careful. Looks like this rock right in front of us also flipped over with a coral on it. Yep. Um, preference for starboard A, by the way. Preference for starboard A.
Oh no. Oh, oh okay. Sample Sorry. <laughs> sample I thought, it was, I thought it wasn't going in. I didn't realize he was still Thank holding you. on to it. Yeah. Thank you. Going back to dive. Roger that. All right. Moving on to towards waypoint four. So all of these waypoints are pretty much in a straight line, unlike last uh, the last dive where we were kind of moving in an arc. But we're slowly getting shallower. So this is we're now at what? Tw wow, only 20, 2289. So we'll only come up about two hundred meters in the last it, since we dived. There's uh, 13 waypoints on this one, so there's a bit of a trek. Bridge nav. Could you please do 30 meters bearing 150? 150. Thank you. So, Hannah, this rock, this pohaku that we just um, sampled and we're bringing with us on the rest of the struni. Soon at the end of this dive, it will be up on deck with us on board the ship and then in the wet lab where we're going to learn so much from it. Can you give us an idea or an estimate about how old this rock may be? I know that's one of the things that we're specifically trying to like nail down, but we're going to hopefully learn whether or not that this seamount has a Cretaceous origin or if it is part of the Hawaiian hotspot, yes? Yes, so I'm pretty sure this the seamount is close to the Hawaiian Islands, right? Mm, right, it's like, it could overlap with them. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it, it's, it's like a lot of the rest of the Hawaiian chain, it's um, on a northwest trajectory, you know, from Hawaii. Uh, but, you know, Val and other scientists are, are wondering if it's part of a different formation hotspot that, than, um, than the direct Hawaiian line. So they're getting me, these. Yes. Give me a second. I need to, once I look at it, I'll, but yes, what we're trying to figure out is if it's around 80, 80 to 100 million years ago or way younger, which would be around, I think, Miss Malia said the oldest of the Hawaiian Islands is 28, 28 million. million. Uh -huh. So probably wow. between that. So it's going to be a big difference big, in age. Yes, yeah. big difference in age. And that I'm going to I'm going to look up where it exactly it Can is. Can we get Super a zoom good. on this, please? Thank you. Now, I believe this one is a bolosomic sponge because it has the, it doesn't look like it's going into a mushroom cap, it looks like it's opening up into more of a basket, but it's on a stalk. So is she at? Looks like a... Are these other corals on it? Out? Yeah, those look like hydroids living on it. Ah, uh, hydroids. Lasers. There you go. Thank you. Hannah, knowing this with like, um, how old some of these rocks we're thinking have been down here, how does it feel when you go and take these samples out of uh, Hercules, like when we finish a dive? Like, how, how is that experience felt? I think you may be muted. <laughs> it's really, surreal because whenever we even cut and we see how thick the manganese crust is it blows my mind how much older these rocks are like again if this is a hundred million years old or from 80 to 100 million years old it was around when the dinosaurs were and it's just it's so hard to like sometimes when you look at geological time it's so large compared to whenever we talk about these corals lives, which are like a thousand years. So like trying to picture it, a thousand to like 4,000 years, I think you said for corals. Yes. So just like mm -hmm. one of the things about being a geologist is like, I've now like 
had my mind try to train in like a way that uh, that I can understand geological time and knowing yeah. that a hundred million years ago is a lot and it's just crazy that you know like Miss Malia said like these rocks will outlive us to the day like to, for like way longer than we will ever be here mm -hmm. and it's just it's crazy when you when I when we cut them open and we look at them and I'm like how awesome is this like each one tells its own story and we get to figure that out mm -hmm. and I'm so happy and like fortunate enough to like be a part of this and like be a part of the be beginning process of it and uh, I, yeah this is just like a dream come true <laughs> and I really loved having Miss Malia here to always remind us about the importance and the spiritual aspect of these beautiful rocks that we yeah. we observe. Mahalo, Hannah. Thank you. <laughs> so, some uh, one of our um, viewers asked about um, resources for those who would like to know more about um, Hawaiian culture, language. So I would recommend you go to a website called ulukau.org. I'll spell it for you. U-L-U-K-A-U dot org. Um, that's, that was an um, online resource. It is just amazing. Um, you can find resource books, Hawaiian language um, materials. You can find Hawaiian language dictionaries. You can find um, curriculum. Um, it is just a rich, dense um, online um, collection of um, really amazing resources. Another resource you can check out is through the Bishop Museum, which is our natural um, history museum here in Hawaii. And that one is hawaiialive.org. So H-A-W-A-I-I-A-L-I-V-E dot org. And they have some really good resources as well um, to share a bit of Hawaiian culture with you all. So, um, yeah, check out those resources if you'd like to learn a little bit more um, about Hawaiian culture and our um, history, political context. Um, it's a beautiful, rich history that, you know, it's not, we don't live in, we're not a museum piece. We are a living, dynamic culture. Um, and have been intimately connected to the Hawaiian archipelago um, for a very, very, very long time as our ancestors um, sailed here um, on, you know, canoes, on voyaging canoes um, over 1,500 years ago. So a deep, rich culture, um, intimately connected to place and um, thriving with our different practices and right here, doing deep sea exploration just like our ancestors did exploring the largest ocean in the world. So thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. Emilia, could you repeat the very first resource you shared? Was it sure. Ulukau? Ulukau, so U-L-U-K-A-U -U dot org. Mm. And I'll say I was on there the other day and spent like not even an like maybe an hour, like just like kind of looking through um, so many resources. And as like a teacher, I found so much curriculum, books for all kinds of different grade levels, all kinds of subjects. Um, and I didn't get a chance to like fully dive deep into oh, that side. Oh, big so crap, I think. A great resource. And I really appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, but you're going you're gonna to find just all kind of wonderful resources in there. From photographs to resource books to Can um, we get a zoom, please? lots of cool, cool things. So just to update, I'm looking at where we are right now in terms of the Hawaiian islands versus the Cretaceous, possible Cretaceous seamounts. And the Gambia Shoal is in that part of the overlapping that it could be Hawaiian or it could be part of the Cretaceous 100 to 80 million years ago. So that's why every rock that we collect is going to be so special. Mm -hmm. I think I didn't realize. So this, the um, this the western uh, 
ridge of this uh, sort of cross-shaped seamount actually connects kind of to the, the seamount that Midway Atoll is on, which mm. is the, um, can you tell us the Hawaiian name again? It's uh, Kuai Helani. Kuai Helani. Um, I didn't realize we were this close to Midway. That's very cool. Yeah, you wonder if this is part of like yeah. the same. Yeah. Or at least looking at it, it makes me think that. Down the dive plan, it's very cool. Only like 25 no, or 50 cool. miles from Midway. Yeah, I just didn't realize that. That it, uh, yeah, I didn't visualize that. So it, like, if you look at the map here to the left, that's the beginning of the atoll that becomes Midway. That's cool. Thanks for looking that up, Hannah. Yeah, no problem. Right, it is up. interesting too to look at it on the map, and you can see there's like, it's not a. It's not alluvial fans, but it looks like a fanning of sediment at, towards the bottom on the Midway Atoll, not the Settle. Cool. I appreciate you spending time going back and pulling that up and answering a previous question that I just kind of threw at you. And uh, yeah, I, well, love I was curious because I needed to know where exactly this was. Yeah. Because again, yeah, it is, which like I'm not... It is kind of cut off, so I was just like guessing. Where are we? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's an ET sponge. Uh, I think ET Ooh. sponges are yellow. What? Yes. I see from Mike Stokeham, I see like why you would think that. Can look like one ET sponge <laughs> in spirit. Okay. It's a bleached ET sponge. I have the ET sponge picture loaded up for interactions and only like half of it loaded, so you can't see the stalk, but you oh. see the like ET head just portion. Just kind of hanging there? Yes, <laughs> which, cool. you know, I was still showing it because I was like, I just, I love the sponge. Oh my gosh, looking at the map, like my, my seamounts are really close. Oh, you're looking at the, the, the chain that goes to the south? Yeah, that's mine, the Voyager oh, seamounts. <laughs> So yeah, so that not, looks like not that's so but those are my samples. There's yeah. that's where they're from. Do we th do you, and uh, is it suspected that those like cross um, the Hawaiian chain and that's where the, this one may be from? Okay, so that's the trajectory. Mm -hmm. oh, that's interesting. And Hannah, what you have pulled up right now, just so if we have viewers who are interested in also seeing, you just went to Google Earth. Yes, yep, I and typed I, in. Yes, I went to Google Earth and typed in Gambia Shoal and. It popped up. It popped up. Yeah, yeah. usually it's works for most named seamounts and the Roger features. Yeah, you can it's, zoom in. it's so impressive that they have seamount names in Google Earth. Um, but yeah, so if if you uh, otherwise you can go find Midway Atoll, uh, yeah. and uh, you know, and we're we're just east of there, and so it's interesting. Uh, so you're looking at this line of seamounts that you said you're working on that runs. It's not quite um, north south, but it's more. It's yeah. it's like like north this. northwest but south southeast mm -hmm. and um and that's the one it looks like it crosses uh the hawaiian seamount and i bet you the hawaiian seamount volcanism may have actually even um uh what's the word like interacted with some of those older seamounts as it was uh erupting mm. possibly there yeah it is possible because rejuvenation is yeah but we wouldn't we wouldn't know that because it would it would be dominated by the more recent hawaiian hotspot volcanism, yes. right? You yes. said rejuvenation is in like the hotspot kind of is active again? Yes. I don't know if that's the yes, right Yes, that's word. correct. But it'd be like, a, it'd be a new hotspot yes. over an older seamount created yes, by a different hotspot. Yes, which is why we try to collect our samples at the base of these seamounts yeah. to avoid new uh, flows. Yeah, no, I'm just uh, hypothesizing. That's just, that's uh, interesting. I don't know that I've really heard about seamount chains crossing each other and Potentially, those those different rocks interacting. Can with one we get another. zoom in on the stringy yeah, one? That's a cool idea. The overhead. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Go for zoom. Huh. Looks like some type of chrysogorgid of some really unique branching structure. 
Uh, I'm not sure what those yellow things are in the back, though. I'm trying to get a good look at them. That's a good question. It's like there's translucent things around them. Yeah. Are we, are we in full zoom? Where are these? Oh. They see, appear to be... I don't know. Oh, I, these look very familiar to me, but They're I so can't pretty. put my finger on it. Um, Tina, Tina, are you asking to collect the yellow things or the um, Chrysogorgerite cross? Is that a little creature? Yeah, look, I think it's... Um, but yeah, that it is, is a polychaete worm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. If, if she's talking about these, I don't think we'd be able to get a, the pincers in there. Yeah. Tina's typing for confirmation, but in no the worries. meantime, this looks super That's familiar. That's very cool. There's a lot going on That's back here. That's certainly something we haven't seen before, yeah. Yeah, I've never seen um, Can we sample this Chrysogorgid? The, the long one here? The, yeah, the stringy one in front of us. Just take, a clip, just take a clipping of yeah, it? Yeah, just a clipping. Like the outer part? Sebastian, would that be a suction after, um, we, that after would, we clip it? That would be a slurp. A slurp, yeah, that's what I meant. The creatures that we're looking at might be a type of hydroid. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I was looking at those yellow things too. I was like, I don't know what that is. But it, it looks like they're, um, yeah, Asakos is solitary hydroids. That's cool. I haven't seen that. They're very delicate looking. Yeah, I don't think the um, the hydrates are collectible because we only see two of them. We haven't seen yeah. uh, the, the critical number yet. And also, I don't think the, the manipulator arm would be able to get in there through without disturbing the uh, the other corals in the way. So I think we can, we'll take a clipping of this Chrysogorgia, but I don't think uh, we can we can we attempt the hydrates. The other, the so we hydroids. see a lot more. Yeah. We counted, what, three, just in case? There were two, maybe three, yeah. All right, so we want a clipping of the... Yeah, board. probably yes. something like either over here or down here that's kind of in the, you know, out of the way. And then we're going to try and slurp it. Okay. So we can get the slurp jar up. It's a cool view on uh, on Atalanta's camera of, of her. So starboard off, bucket on. Yep. And uh, what jar? What sample jar? Should be... I don't think um, we have slurp. any. Slurp jar number one. one. Number one. Flush right. right now. And what jar? Right. One. You want to rotate counterclockwise? There you go. Jar one. I feel like I'm getting a little close to the wall here. If it's too um, hazardous, okay. let us know. Um, what are you seeing on the swing of Atalanta? Is it still swinging or is it, has it slowed? You can come up on the winch another five meters. It's, it's moving slightly, but. Huh? Oh, did you, did you already communicate that? No, no. I didn't. That's a little bit better. Um, so, Asakos are asking to snip below a branching point. If so, just like towards the bottom is usually fine. Uh, wait, oh wait, below a branching point. Yeah, so we parts. want to try to get a branch. 
right. with the branch below with multiple pieces. Go for, go for a little bit of zoom. Coming in. Yeah, below the branching the point. Branching point. There's one in the top left might be easier. Yeah, I'm not sure. Here, maybe? This yeah, one? like, yeah, that's branching. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, so okay. you're above that. Yeah, right. Good on the zoomage. Yeah, that's, that's great. Oh, you navigated that so well. That's good. Coming out. That was awesome. Great job. That was so delicate. I worry Thank now, you. though, that these so might be a little big for the slurp. But full, full wide. Well, they're, yeah, they're if, not. If uh, they're too big for a slurp, we can throw them into one of the box, starboard boxes. They'll probably go better in the forward box so they don't get the thruster down wash. Yeah, that's up to you guys. All I right, think the if you want to do a forward hard. box, it's cool, too. I've got to call Jake. The forward box would be ideal. We're up against the wall on the right side, too, so I don't know if I can get the arm around. Moving a little slow when the arm's on, huh? Yeah. Yeah, everything's slower. Concern. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Sample number 94. That's awesome. Thanks. That's the unmarked port. <laughs> unmarked. Maybe the alpha? It's the lambda. Omega? Lambda. Just get out of here and then do a reset. There you go. Yep. I'm so full of light. Let me go back to the starboard camera instead of the bucket. That was such an amazing uh, combination of uh, organisms we had there. It really was. Hiding in a little. Oh, under, that's a overhead. large sponge and a uh, militaris. Those hydroids that we saw, um, I'm like trying to look at pictures. Oh, I was just about to do that too. <laughs> That was, I think I heard someone say solitary hydroid. Yes. Yeah. As in they don't grow in like a colony. Yeah, and they had yellow stems. Yellow stems. Yeah. Okay. Like they looked like, uh, the stems are so yellow, they look like like, uh, like daffodil po uh, pollen, like in the flower. We're seeing more, more of them already. Sampled? Yeah, these are the ones we just sampled. Wish we knew this ahead of time. <laughs> wow. 
the master. Sorry. <laughs> Might just need to scoot over a little bit. Yeah. You guys ready for a ship move pilot? Yep, all ready. All good. Yeah, sounds good. Bridge nav. <clears throat> Ship move, please, 25 meters at bearing 145. Huh? Oh, yeah. Hannah, do we have any interesting observations about these rocks that we're looking at? Um, I think they just look like rock fragments, and probably most of them are probably just manganese. Yeah. And not even the nodules. No. The seamount is very different than the one we dove on yeah. yesterday. Mm -hmm. They've all been very different. Yeah. Also, when we get to a more sparse area, further away from that kind of higher density spot we just went through briefly, uh -huh. Let's try to take a background sample. So I'm remind oh, of a Niskin? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're kind of in that area now. Maybe a little bit more space. Yeah, just give it a little more space just in case there's a little current coming this way, you know? Okay, yep. Do we have any ideas about why We've seen so many dead sponges in this area, or just like in general on this seamount. Um, I'm not sure. Um, it could be to something to do with oxygen or water parameters, but it's kind of hard to tell. It's be a lot of conjecture unless we're sampling a lot of these dead sponges. And I think that is a black coral. Maybe Leopathies? Um, Tina or Asako, feel free to correct me. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know what what that is, or if I mean, we have to be in here, right? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. Oops. So it looks like there's some space between waypoint four and five. So that'll that's good. We're going to be moving up slope some more.
So guys, I gotta head out. We're doing some culture protocol at 7.30. Okay. So yeah. have a good rest of the watch. Thanks, Malia. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bridge now. Could we please track a line bearing one four zero at zero point three knot? Thank you. Oh, can we get a zoom on that sudden pink? Looks like that one's fallen over too. Oh no, it, maybe not. Looks like it's trying to grow around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it might have fallen over and is now trying to correct itself. Yeah, it's maybe. Grow. Go for zoom. So, Sebastian, if oh. there's... Paragorgid. Yeah, sorry. If there's... um. So all on, on a coral, all of the polyps are individual organisms, right? Um, in a sense, yes. So who grows the stalk? The first polyp. Oh, OK. Yes. So a single polyp lands, and they clone, and over time they adjust. Oh, OK. Change. Huh. And Usually the first couple of polyps help lay that first aragonite yeah. and calcite base, base. and skeleton. Okay. Huh. So they fix the rock. That's some interesting genetics mm -hmm. for like they know that they've already made a base and they don't need to keep doing it or something. Yeah. It's almost like ants, like they have their like roles. Yeah. That's cool. That was a really good question. Very good question. Yes. Well, it just, you know, I have no idea. <laughs> How do corals reproduce? Do they? Oh, they spawn. what is this guy? Spawn. What is that guy? That's a <gasps> hydroid. It looks like a hydroid. It looks like Ooh. a hydroid. It's huge. <laughs> I got hydroids pulled up right in front of my face. So that <laughs> Next to a big sponge. <laughs> See, I could, I could probably get confused and thought, could think that that was a ET wow. sponge. It is. No. No. Uh, uh, yeah. Go for zoom. See, it's like trippy. Wow. It's a trippy sponge. Trippy sponge. This guy is gorgeous. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, let's go all the way to hydrozoans. Got such a beautiful color. I'm totally mesmerized. Crack at the whole what thing are the white racers? things? Circles. Or I'm not sure. I'm not super familiar with this morphology of hydroid. Coming out. Looks possibly like this guy. Let me see if the name loads. Corymorpha day, Corymorpha. Oh yeah, it does look like that. That's very cool looking. Oh wait, Sebastian, look. Oh, is that another? That's number eight. Yes, number eight. I'm yes. having the hardest time spotting those. I don't yeah, know same. I, I was just like staring really hard at the screen like, oh. Uh -huh. Once you see it, though, it's very obvious, but yeah. it takes a while to see. They blend in a lot. Mm. 
I'm so glad we got to see that huge hydroid. That was awesome. Yeah, that, that was really cool. cool. Yeah, that that's a first for this watch at least. Can we also it. zoom in on this branched coral over here? This one, the big fan. Yes, the big one. Looks like it has two possible polyps on it. I'm wondering if maybe a zoanthids on there. Also, I think I see another militaris right here, a little white. Oh, I see it. Okay. White with pink pollen. That's a great zoom. Tiny shell right in the middle. Yeah, there's a, there's a little tiny shell in there. Oh, I see it. It's like a tiny little. Huh, not sure. Looks like a little shell. Are there snails this deep? Yeah, there's snails. Hmm. Could be a snail. Can I see the base, please? Sure. There's bamboo. Bamboo. If we make a guess that it's not a bamboo and it turns out to be, are we bamboozled? Yes. <laughs> botryoidal. <laughs> it's bamboozled on the botryoidal. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure protocol looks so beautiful with the sun setting in the background. Yeah. I kind of see them on the, the deck. Oh, yeah. It's the second cool thing we've, we've missed Yeah. on our watch. Well, I feel like our giant hydroid was very that was impressive. worth the price of exchange. It was kind of sad missing that nice hula dance last week. Yeah, that one was. Yeah. Derek, I can't hear you super well. I think I heard you saying how we missed that it. That was a bummer to miss. I'm able to see it on the camera, but still. Oh, uh, it's a cucumber? Huh? Is that a cucumber right there? Yeah, it looks like it. Sponge, I think. Or is a sponge a broke? No, it looks like a sponge that broke. Oh, there's another one. That's number nine. Oh, number nine. Oh, oh. Yeah, Tori, I was just saying it was kind of a, I, w I wish we could have seen the hula dance last week in person. Instead of yeah. Oh, yeah. A little glimpse we, we saw from the control bin. I know. Front row, y'all stayed in here. We stepped out to see that one. And honestly, it was very special. Um, I think Daniel got a video recording from like kind of the front that maybe he could show you. Yeah, that'd be yeah. nice. Someone yeah. has to drive the bus. So, Sebastian, I assume that once we see 10, we can sample the 11th, not that we can sample the 10th. Let's see, let me read this. Mm -hmm. Up to three specimens can be collected per morphotype if an abundant assessment of at least 10 morphotypes is ascertained on an RV dive. Okay, so, so after 10. number 11 yes. or 12. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting fascinated by what they're doing. Who? Oh, our, the probe our people. Oh. <laughs> our Ohana. Bridge nav. Uh, can we do a new move? Uh, tracking a line at bearing 185. Thank you. These guys are Colophyca sponges.
I think that's a bathy pathies, yep. I feel like bathy pathies would be a sound of Pokemon makes. <laughs> bath pathies. <laughs> Wait, say that again. Bathy pathies. There you go. That's <laughs> so good. <laughs> Everybody has their like own little, I guess, like saying, like gnar, and then <laughs> gnar, gnar. <laughs> bathy pathies, how you just said that. <laughs> if they're totally zooming in on the bathy pathies, so I say it again, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> bathy pathies. <laughs> Or is it a bathy pathies? Now that I'm looking at it closer. Yeah, it's not a bathy pathies. Never what mind. Is it? Looks like a yellow coral, branchy coral. Can I actually get a zoom in? Go for zoom. Oh, it's moving. It's turning to look at us. What I is think the... it's some kind of black coral. Yeah. But it's not bathy pathies, I don't think. There's something kind of translucent next to the base yeah. on the left. Um, we can't get a good look at it. It might just be an extension of the base. Thank you. Do you think this is probably a good spot for a background skin? Well, there's a coral coming up. Oh, oh, there is? You can see it? Uh, yeah. Great. There it is. Uh, Chrysogorgia hiding out in plain sight. But yeah, I think we can, um, maybe in a minute or so, Yeah. take a background Niskin sample. There's not very much around here. Say the word. Whenever, up to you, Mike. And word. Word. You want to stop for that? No. I think, or, I, think I can do it. Okay. I don't think we need it. So this will be number uh, four? Yes, this is number four. But sample number 95. This can trigger. Thank you. Nice. Sample 95. Mm. So I wonder if there's been any studies done on 
Niskin flushing. Like, if we're moving forward and they're positioned horizontal, uh, vertically, are we really, f like, changing that much as we move? Yeah. No clue. Just wondering about that. Talking to myself. Uh, uh, that's cool. Yeah, I was saying that's an interesting point, Mike, because usually you're using them when you're moving vertically through the water column. Yeah. Yeah, like if it's on a CTD rosette or something, like they can, it's it's it's, a, it's ver vertical movement. But for us, you know, we're not we're doing mostly horizontal, so I'm just not sure uh, about that. Yeah, I mean, sampling eDNA is not exactly a, um, you know, you get what you get kind of. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think it's interesting, the emerging science on like how much the volume of water you sample sort of affects what you get. Um, yeah. So there's some interesting work being done on that. So right now, we collect the sample, we filter it on the sh once we retrieve it on the ship and filter it down onto filter paper, and that gets analyzed later. Yeah, and then preserve it, right? Yep. But there's people yeah. working on in situ samplers that basically filter oh, at wow. depth, um, so you don't need to, you can sample large volumes, you don't need to deal with all the equipment and oh, yeah. time later. It's a good idea. It's funny, though, in physical oceanography class, they always talk about, like, a parcel of water that's usually, like, you know, some sort of cube dimension right. uh, that's non-compressible, not, you know, it's not in any sort of box. I mean, it's just, like, a parcel of water as if it, like, existed in its own boundary without any actual bounds. <laughs> yeah. So it's, like, thinking about the Niskan bottle reminds me about that. Right, so gorgeous. Oh, a lot of them. A wow. lot of them. A bamboo whip. And a bathy pathies. <laughs> that is my new favorite word. It's so funny. And back to nothing. It seems like it comes in very, very brief spurts.
sometimes I feel like watching the sonar. It's like my job's to run you guys into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you guys' job's to lift up over it. Yeah. Not many professions you get to run through walls. <laughs> Ooh. What's that sponge called, Sebastian? I think this is a two-headed um, caliphicus. That is like perfectly circular yes. or spherical. Hello, lava. Almost sounded like you said, hello, lava. <laughs> hello, lava. <laughs> It's like that book, Good Night Moon. Good night, lava. Good night, sponge. <laughs> Wait, did I count the initial C pen that they saw last shift? I don't know. I think so. I think so? Okay. Yes. I, was just, I was just thinking about that. I'm like, wait a minute, did I do that? There's something up here. Crinoid. Crinoid. Not as Pokemon soundy. And the cucumber right below the crinoid. Oh. Is this a big Militaris? Can we get a zoom on it, please? It actually looks a little bit more like solid white than translucent white. Tito, can you swing your heading over to 185 for me? Go for zoom. Yeah, it does look like Militaris. This is a big one. It's like gold down there. Oh, it does look like gold. Oh my god. Wow. Where? On its look. On those two branches uh, up yeah. to the right, to the down to the bottom left. Oh. Right there. Why does it do that? I'm not sure. I don't think I've seen like a gold, gold coral like yeah. that. There's Hawaiian gold coral, but it doesn't look like gold. It looks like you could get it at Home Goods. This is unusual. Yeah, Sako says it's Militaris. It's just a straight. It, look, it doesn't look like a spray painted gold yeah. finger. Cool. Gold finger. Sako, any uh, commentary on the gold coloration on the skeleton here? Looks a little bit thicker than the polyps too, and up to a point, you know. Yeah. I did not expect to see this. Interesting. No. Oh. Thank you. You don't want that. <laughs> wow. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I've never seen an actual gold-colored coral. Osaka is typing. She might give us an explanation. Uh, is there any chance fire. you'd be sampling this? Um, I think we're good. I would say we're good. Okay. Then I won't. Because I don't think we'd be able to sample it anyways, based on how low it is on the coral anyways. 
Oh. Jeez. Daniel nearly dying in the room. Oh, family Chrysogorgia the Gorgia Day has gold or metallic color stems and branches. That's so cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I did not know that. It's really fascinating. Hannah gave it the uh, the mind blown uh, emoji. emoji. It's great. <laughs> I like that one a lot. I don't use it very often, but when you get to, it's fun. Yeah. I mean, that way you'd think that would have the name. Um, gold about these. Like what? <laughs> gold coral. All right, some folks from the 4 to 8 watch are about to start hopping off. We've got a watch change coming up. She says that primroids also occasionally have gold colored stems. It's very cool. XOX. Yes, Asako, the Hawaiian gold coral. I'm very familiar with that one. It's one of my favorite corals. Kula mana mana Hawaiianese. No. Haumea. Haumea. Kula mana mana Haumea. Watch change the video.
Smells like burning electronics in here again. Yeah. I guess that hurry up. Uh -huh. Check, check. Everybody, welcome back to the 8 to 12 party, y'all. <laughs> We're here on Science Party Line. This is They Dared Me To, They Dared Me To. This is uh, Daniel Kinzer uh, trying to launch my music career here on SPL. And uh, so glad to be with you. Hope everyone's feeling the aloha, feeling the love, trying to be their best selves while they're down here cruising the depths of Papahanaumokuakea, these sacred waters. Um, I know I'm excited to be back with the crew in the in the control van and uh, look mm -hmm. forward to exploring this Seamount Gambia Shoals. I think this is our first watch on this one. So yeah. uh, this is a, it is a new friend for us. New friend. Yeah, yeah thanks for joining us tonight. Everyone's vocals are warm. Yeah. <laughs> a little yeah, bit, yeah. Ready. We got warmed up. That's right. Oh, I think Amber might not be set yet. <laughs> well, you can imagine oh. this one. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll know what it the, looks uh, like. The amazing, <laughs> the amazing Amber, just outside filming us all, doing yes. uh, protocol, mm -hmm. sharing our appreciation and gratitude and mm -hmm. uh, our words of requesting <laughs> permission, honoring this sacred place together, and mm -hmm. uh, Amber capturing it out there and then coming right back into the control van to bring you the deep sea live on Nautilus Live. Thank you. Awesome. Much. Thank you so much. Mahalo Nui Amber. That was awesome. It we, was. We appreciate you. And then all of the other crew. Um, aloha mai kako. Aloha ahi ahi. O mihina leni kavaleri ko inoa. No o ahu mai ao. Hello everyone. Good evening. My name is Mahina Leni and I'm tuning, or I guess I'm calling in from Nautilus with our amazing crew. But I just want to say thank you to all of our crew on board. They made time to come out and support us as we uh, sing an Oli Mahalo, which is a song or a mele of gratitude. Um, and it just is always, it's always great to connect and create that time and space for ourselves in our own lives. And maybe it doesn't have to involve singing or maybe just like a quiet meditation or just time alone or just time in nature um, to just really get grounded and to connect with yourself to your place and then just to always say thank you because you can never say thank you or mahalo too much so true thank you all i really appreciate you guys we appreciate you too uh, mahina <laughs> right back at you some of our viewers may have heard that oli mahalo because you and malia sang it so beautifully uh, a couple of times as we ascended from from the bottom especially yeah. on those uh those heavy and uh deep dives on, on board the aircraft carriers. Wow, seems like forever ago and seems like yesterday, but it was, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. we're in a different dimension now. So, uh, yeah, amazing. Mahalo. This is Daniel Kinzer. Uh, I call Honolulu, Hawaii, the island of Oahu home. I'm science communication fellow on board uh, and just so in love with the 8 to 12 watch. This is uh, it's a great crew. You're in for another treat. Hopefully you've been joining us throughout the Ala Amoana Kaiuli expedition here in Papahanaumokuakea, learning all about its cultural significance, historical significance, ecological significance, geological significance, dating back hundreds of million, hundred million years plus um, in this part of the Pacific. We've been learning all about it with this incredible watch team. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it down the line, let them introduce themselves again, especially to all of our new viewers. We're glad you're here. Mahalo. All right. Uh, my name is Val Finlayson. I am uh, the watch lead and one of the co-lead scientists. Uh, I'm a 
uh, postdoc in geological sciences at uh, the uh, University of Maryland when I am not on this ship, which is uh, most of the time. Um, I specialize in the isotope geochemistry of uh, intraplate seamounts, such as this one. And uh, yeah, um, really enjoy kind of kind of teasing some of these uh, uh, numbers out of these rocks were to tell stories about uh, the origins of not just these seamounts, but uh, parts of the history of the Pacific uh, uh, plate and some of its tectonics. So, cool. Yeah, um, hi all, I am Virginia. I am a uh, currently acting as a scientist on board Nautilus. Very privileged to be in this position. Um, I am a PhD student at Florida State University. I'm studying a uh, seamount eco uh, ecology in the deep sea, particularly focused on the seamount, sort of like the, you know, the mountain we're on today, focusing really on, um, also yeah, focusing yeah. on anthropogenic yeah, impacts. Um, and yeah, so, feel so honored to be here and, um, you know, yeah, love, love getting to know these people and uh, getting to work with these on this team. Very much so, it's a great team. Ano e meke aloha, um, o vau kukui, no moio, um, aloha everybody, my name's Kukui. Um, I am one of the data loggers on board and I am so blessed and humbled and privileged to be here with you all here on, on the ship as well as on the shore um, in this really unique and special place, getting to learn so many new things every single time we go diving somewhere and being in this really special place um, that our kupuna call home, Papaha no Mokuakea, so mahalo. Mahalo. And uh, shout out to Kukui who uh, helped launch Herc today. Yay! Yeah, Kukui. Absolutely, yeah. Mahalo, Kukui. Again, just oh, yeeted it right over the side. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, I, I've got a picture of her yeeting it over the side. Oh. <laughs> we, got, we got proof this time. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it up on the shared folder later. <laughs> Kukui is half my size, uh, maybe a third, and uh, at least 100 times as strong. <laughs> no, 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 no. Drawing, from, drawing from the strength of Maui himself. I think so. Uh, We're uh, letting our front row get all settled. Uh, Mahina, have so, you introduced no. yourself? Yeah, um, but my name is Mahina Lenny yeah, Cavallari. I'm from the island yeah. of Oahu. As Kui had mentioned too, that this is uh, Aina Kupuna, Wau Akua. So this is a place of our, of our gods, of our ancestors. Uh, when we come across the Tropic of Cancer, otherwise known as Kealapolohi Vakane, we see this as a boundary line between realms. And Kanako Ivi, Native Hawaiians, okay. okay. we just, have just, uh, two worlds or two realms. One is called Po of Darkness. Uh, right. It's the worlds beyond. It's the world that we come from, that our Hawaiian universe comes from, our school of thought, philosophies, um, our people, our language, our culture comes from this world of the Kaiuli, the ocean depths. And we believe that after we transition out of this life in Ao, uh, we will return to these ocean depths and be among our ancestors. Um, the world of Ao is the human consciousness. It's where we live. It's where we work. It's where we run around and, you know, try to get everything done in a 24-hour period. But I think coming out here, as, you know, uh, Kukui had mentioned, it's just a place where we're able to disconnect from that realm and to connect with all of the world around us, the natural phenomenon. I mean, we see our kupuna, our, our ancestors, our omakua, our family spirits within the waves that crest within the malolo, the flying fish, or the ko'ekea, the you know navigational birds that fly overhead of Nautilus. So I think to be here as a young kanaka, to be on board um, in general, is just such a blessing, such a privilege. So I really appreciate coming out here and I really appreciate the crew who's so receptive, uh, so welcoming and just so compassionate towards one another. Mahalo, Mahina. Of course, we should give a big shout out, not on the line, but uh, in the science chat, uh, almost every dive seems like all dive, giving us incredible insights and information. Asako, thank you so much for uh, for sharing all of your all of your knowledge and insight joining us here in the van. Yeah, thank you, Asako. Yeah, mahalo, mahalo Asako. Asako is a uh, regular in our chat, and she's amazing. Absolutely. Always, always helps out so much with coral IDs. 
uh, helping us keep track of uh, some sea pens right now. There's yep. a sea spider on the screen right now. Yeah. yeah. We do have a sea spider. <laughs> Big guy. One of my favorite parts on board today was Rock O'Clock <laughs> with Dr. Val. And <laughs> he had learned so too. much, wow. too, just within that short period of time. Yeah, I got a few more I got I to gotta show oh, folks, too. So we, we cut up a whole variety of rocks this morning. Still have a few more to go. Wow. Is this a second spider? And then yeah. instead of working on rock descriptions this afternoon, I actually managed to get a little bit of a nap. Good. Which so does important. not happen enough. Well <laughs> Naps done. are good. Well Naps done. are great. As you should. They are. Yeah, yeah if, if my mom is listening, she will confirm in the chat that uh, I am one of the world's worst nappers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of fun sharing sharing rocks with everybody. It always is, because they always have something something uh, different to tell us uh, inside versus outside. Especially in these older seamounts where everything's coated with manganese. Uh, yeah, the close as well. No, no, the mic is here. Oh, yeah, it's on. Oh, I don't okay, know. I'll turn it off. Yeah. We are still just over 2,200 meters deep, uh, near, nearly a mile and a half below the surface on Gambia Shoals Seamount. I'm here still in the northwestern reaches of Papahanaumokuakea, the Hawaiian island chain, largest marine national monument in the United States, larger than all of the national parks combined. Average depth, uh, deeper than where we're at now actually. It's mostly deep sea, and from what we've seen, it's uh, teeming with life and lots of interesting rocks and geological mm -hmm. insights. So. Looks like it, yeah. <laughs> front, wall, front row, when you're ready, we'd love to, uh, we'd love to share you awesome humans with, with everyone listening in online. I can start. Um, my name is Catalina. I am a master's student at USF's College of Marine Science in St. Pete, Florida, and I am serving as a navigator here on the helping out the ROV team find find their way around. Doing an amazing job. Aquaman, we can't hear you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> SPL. SPL needs to be on. Oh, that's why. <laughs> there we go. I was talking okay. over you because I was trying to actually do stuff. Here. Uh, we, <laughs> know, we know, we know. Oh, we, we, appre out. We, we appreciate that too, Robert. Thanks for letting us uh, carry on while you uh, make it all happen with your front row team. Um, I'm Zach Gonzalez, uh, Robert's co-pilot for Atlanta, and... Uh, my time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm uh, Amber Flint, video engineer, uh, and bring you the maximum tunes. That's my job. Thank you. Thank you all, front row. Even even the ones being a little sassy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've probably earned it at this point. Oh, guaranteed, we've earned it. more than earned it. Yeah. Robert's uh, being kind to put up with uh, put up with us here in the back row. There's some great shots on the Atlantic cam. Nope, I didn't quite catch that, Amber. Oh, I said the Al Atlantic cams get some nice views on Herc. Oh yeah, definitely. In one of our ship to shores today, um, Megan, one of our expedition leads, she had mentioned that we probably have a little, a little over than a week out here. Whoa. It's already the 20th. It's kind of, it's crazy to think, and so bittersweet at the same time. 
Uh, but we'll be back home next Thursday. Won't know what to do with ourselves. Yeah, all right. Oh my goodness. Run to the ice cream parlor. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Now I'm going to go over to the poke shop next Ooh. to the dock once we get in and get some, yeah. get some poke. Yeah. yeah. We go so soon. Yeah. 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 Here we go again. And it's only been 12 minutes. <laughs> I, I apologize. Okay. Okay. Back pedaling. Back pedaling. Bad watch Reverse. lead. Bad watch lead. <laughs> wonderful watch lead. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I think you're hungry. Oh, no, I want poke. Uh, is that That's a black coral right. there? Back to the pool. Huh? Nope. Yeah. Maybe not. That Some sort of coral. Uh, <laughs> Zoom in. Oh, I can't see. Maybe you're right. But I think it is a black coral. Uh, Might be. Yeah. Good spot. Good job. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Look at that. Very interesting. It's not a rock. <laughs> <laughs> One of the questions that came up on our ship to shore, though, is, and I know some of you folks have sailed on many Thank different you. vessels uh, for different periods of time, and others have had entire careers within the oceans, but a student had asked, how do you prepare for an expedition, a voyage, a cruise, any time or long portion of being out at sea? Um, how do you prepare for that? I'm curious to know. I was talking to Virginia about it, but I love learning a little bit more about you all. Make a list. But then I never get enough snacks. Or <laughs> that is, that is <laughs> the hard I part. I drank my last Diet Coke. Oh, no. <laughs> I can imagine That's Robert's great. list just saying snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Cookies. <laughs> you gotta, I mean, it's like going on a backpacking trip. You gotta... Be prepared, because there's a... Uh, Learn how to ration you know? yourself, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're out here for a month. That's that's a long time. You start yes. downloading podcasts and TV shows like a month in advance. <laughs> yep. Yes, actually. You got to make sure you got a really full smart. tooth of toothpaste. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, toothbrush, um, toothpaste. Make sure I you have enough deodorant. Brush. I had to barter for toothpaste from Jorge. He's <laughs> a <laughs> generous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there's a snack that you really want, while you're away, make sure make sure you have it, that you uh, bring it on the ship with you. Um, Back in the day, they used to have a ship store. And they I was going to say, I've been a boat that had yeah, that. Yeah, that's yeah, what I, I'm used to that. So that's I was kind gone of out, of, out of favor with uh, all mm -hmm. the research ships in the U.S. anyway. Mm -hmm. You never find that. They, you can find them selling T-shirts, but not Interesting. those kind of basic items you need. Yeah, there's also some prep that has to happen at home and at work, you know, make sure your living space uh, uh, can be left unattended for a month if need be. Um, find a place to board your pets or keep them with uh, your significant other friends or whatever. Um, yeah, my, my workstations in the lab are all covered over with plastic wrap to keep the, uh, keep the dust out. Oh, wow. So. For me, it's pretty simple. Just like to uh, make sure I'm I'm present with uh, with family and loved ones, knowing that uh, I'm gonna miss them when I'm gone. And if I, it's so easy to get so excited about what's coming ahead that uh, forget to give them the attention that I'd like to give them before I go. So, yeah. And then I usually don't make a list and forget all the things. That I should <laughs> Gotta work on that. Definitely some creature comforts, like I'll pack my own pillow. Mm. I like to I'm out here so often I don't really unpack much. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes then, sense. Uh, I'm originally from Seattle, so I have a great love for a really nice espresso, so mm. I bring a little coffee. Can we get a zoom on this? Mm. Yeah, I brought a little coffee too. Um, uh, yeah, getting WhatsApp set up with the uh, friends and family uh, uh, since we have good enough internet out here to uh, uh, send texts back and forth do occasional voice calls whatever so. mm -hmm. oh yeah seasick meds <laughs> <laughs>
definitely seasick meds. Yeah, this ship is blessed with the best internet in the fleet. Mm. Yeah. Shout out to the, our data engineering team for that. Yeah. Yes, uh. Awesome. Oh, yeah, we got some folks with art supplies on the ship. Mm -hmm. So shower that's been pretty cool. Shower shoes. Don't forget your yeah. shower shoes. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's like the number one most important thing. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to venture in there without those. <laughs> <laughs> don't give away the dark dungeon secrets. <laughs> <of the house. laughs> Not all butterflies and rainbows. <laughs> yeah, we do work sometimes. We just we just store a lot of uh, deep sea microorganisms down there. On the, that's all. That is a beautiful coral. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. So for me, I've been going out. Um, you know, one of the key things that I do is I actually prep for other people, and I um, I uh, I like to to bake um, and. Uh, like before this this trip, uh, I made lasagna. Ooh. Um, so that's in my freezer for uh, my partner. And so she's mushroom coral. Yeah, a little mushroom coral. So she is uh, she's been eating that um, and some curry and such. And then um, you know right before I leave, well I also make sure that I have like little things that make life just a little bit nicer, like you know good smelling soap and a nice towel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the luxury items. Yeah, yeah, truly, truly. And then directly before we leave, I call my grandma. Aww. Yeah. There you go. Aww. Grandma. Oh, that's cool. I wonder if that's a chitin. You can almost see the I think that is a chitin. Yeah. And it looks like a little a little pseudoanthemasis, too. Yep. Little pseudo pseudoanthemus, giant polyps. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Yeah, I was over at my grandmother's, uh, uh, me and my mom, a couple days before I flew out. Actually, I think the day before I flew out. Mm -hmm. That was nice. Yeah. It's important. Grandmas are important. Yep. Yeah, my cats are at my mom's place right now, and uh, uh, my grandma lives nearby, so um, whenever I'm up, up there, uh, we always go by and visit a couple times. So. Yeah, she's 97. Wow. wow. Oh, that's she awesome. She has awesome. some great stories. Yeah. One of my steps before I leave for a long cruise like this is sitting down with my pets, my cats, and reassuring them that I'll be gone for a little bit. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I know. Yeah. I always Getting feel so bad that I'm going to miss. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh -huh. Do they get mad when you're gone? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have a really great roommate that loves them and they love her, so she takes care of them, but that's good. Yeah. Yeah, mine would be happy to be back in the apartment. Uh, <laughs> one of them, she <laughs> she anytime we're away for a while, she she gets back into the apartment and I like put her down and she's just like oh my god, I'm home, and sort of like glitches out trying to go everywhere in the apartment at the same time, and just like, it's it's hard to describe, but yeah. she's just like, my space is back, and I'm in it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Apparently my cat has been sleeping on a sweater of mine on the floor. Oh. oh. She misses you. Yeah. yeah, bringing my cats up to my mom's, I also brought them some, uh, brought some of their creature comforts with them, so, um, one, one of their uh, big poofy beds made it, um, <laughs> one of their litter boxes, uh, some of their toys. I bought, I bought uh, my tabby a uh, catnip squid a few days before <laughs> nice. I left. Nice. It seemed appropriate. And we've been actually seeing pink squid about that size the last few dives, so. <laughs> Oh, these so same, nice. these same, the, the ancestors of these same animals used to be incredible hunters and so well suited <laughs> to taking care of themselves, and now look at them. I know. <laughs> they're like us, eating, eating gelato like really on Sundays. They're truly <laughs> top predators, and then we just pick yeah. them up, and they're like, could you not? Yeah. My cat loves lavender ice cream. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Tofu. Oh. Actually, I think I think they figured things out because they kind of get us to wait on them. 
Yeah. Well, they, yeah. Domestic they, they domesticated themselves. They sure did. Yeah. They domesticated us. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah that's exactly. To their needs. Yeah. I mean, we've got we've got a lot, we've got a lot in common, I think, with uh, ancient Egyptian culture, right? Because uh, cats were uh, were um, you know a, 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 an item of war uh, worship, right? What Don't we basically to, do that, that on that the culture? internet now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> when I come home, my cat will ignore me for the first like 24 hours. No. And just pretend that just I don't exist. Me. Yeah, and then at, in the middle of the night, she'll crawl onto me, Aww. onto my chest, and then sleep Aww. on me. Oh. Forgiveness. Aww. Yeah. Forgiveness. Yeah. I just gotta. I have to earn it. But. <laughs> yeah, my first couple of nights back, my tabby is probably gonna try to sleep on my face, <laughs> and uh, and the other one's gonna be like basically, uh, basically trying to nuzzle with me all night. So I don't expect to really sleep yeah. much the first night back. Those cats would be right out the house real quick. It's good thing they're, good thing they're not my pets. <laughs> Oh, we we know you. I call we know you get a a, a <laughs> yeah. cat and, be, and end up being one of those folks that the cat absolutely adores, oh, yeah. and you <laughs> secretly it's adore so it. I see yeah. that. <laughs> you have too big a heart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Come on. <laughs> I'm coming to break you. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Oh, so funny. But yeah, family time's important. I have dinner with my dad before leaving call my other family right before heading out and one thing too with one of our other captains um, you know leaving before these trips he we have to go down to our dock and then help prepare provision the canoe and things like that pack everything load everything and then like he'll always cut us out early I feel like that day b prior and he'd just tell us everyone just finish what you're doing pack up and go home and see your family spend time with your loved ones before you go out to sea and so, I mean, I think that's just, that's a sign of great leadership and it's a sign of a great heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knows what's important. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. What's this? Can oh no. An it's urchin? a spiky thing and I am not going oh, to no, guess no, what no. it is. Oh, yeah. 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 Might be a lipanema. Could it be a lipanema? Lipanema. <laughs> <laughs> not again. Oh, oh. 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 yes. Uh, it's Frosted tips. Oh, oh and it has a friend. Two. Oh, wow. Two wow. That's great. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, and a shrimpy. Oh, Sebastian from the lounge. Oh, yes. I'm going to stop you from making a possible mistake before you make it. Oh, thank you. Those are not anemones. I know. Oh. Yeah, the no, yeah. coral Tell us more. Yeah, the coral alamorphs. Coral alamorphs. Yeah. Yeah. I fell for that questions. before. I'm like, not again. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we saw these a couple of days ago. And they're, the, yeah, it took us a minute to figure out what they were. It's white tips that give them away. Yeah. yeah. We appreciate you being a good but, yeah. Uh, shipmate. Yeah, yeah. thanks. It's mahalo. They're pretty awesome. Although folks tuning in at 8 to 12 have gotten a little bit used to me uh, making uh, incorrect identifications, maybe. You but, and me uh, both. <laughs> but yes, me we're doing the best we can. Yeah, I, I would not have known that these were not anemones had uh, 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 Virginia and Kukui and Misako all uh, uh, chimed in and uh, figured out what it was. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, thanks, Sebastian, for uh, for uh, giving us a heads up. We really appreciate it. Mahalo, Sebastian. Of course. <laughs> wow, they must have interrupted a vicious game of Uno to uh, or some fierce uh -huh. puzzling. <laughs> uh, in the lounge to uh, no, we should feel to drop some knowledge. Yeah, yeah, that's really yeah. commitment from the lounge. We appreciate that. That's that's awesome. All the fun came to a halt just <laughs> so he could inform us. That's of not an anemone. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like but, that, that 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 they have uh, that they're neighbors, that they're friends. Mm -hmm. And yes, I am anthropomorphizing. <laughs> <laughs> but that isn't a lip. That's a lipanema, or that's not a lipanema. It is not a lipanema. That's a Aww. different thing. That is a different. Yeah. Th that is okay. a coralomorph. It's what we were talking about um, that people have in their aquariums. Yeah. Um, and lipanema is a type of anemone, or lipanema is a type of anemone. Yes. Oh. And it's tricky though because it can either have. Um, Oops. 
One of the things is that it's got those tentacles all over, and it can either have all of those tentacles or the pointy red, like the outside of that corellomorph, right. or all of those tentacles have the little white points. Got it. Mm. Like the inside. Okay. And there's, um, I don't think you can see the mouth, as, like the the, um, the oral disc as well in the anemone as you can here. So it looks yeah. very different. Yeah, we could see the oral disc pretty clearly in those. Mm -hmm. And now that's at least from, you know, visible observations of the Bendik Animal Guide. I could, I could be wrong. But, oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I, remember, I, I think I was seeing that on uh, some separate searches too, so. Great. I, if I remember correctly, yeah, I think you're right. We are glad you're here. If you're watching with us, exploring Gambia, Gambia Some Shoals. Purple and yellow ones. Oh, and another Corallomorph behind it. Oh, oh nice. yeah, that's yeah, two different colors. Wow. Yeah. But both with the little white dots. Yep. This is our tenth dive of our uh, nearly month-long, four-week-long expedition in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument on Gambia Shoal. And uh, uh, right. amazing to think just a couple dives left before we make yeah. our way back to Honolulu. Two more after this one wraps up. Wow. Yeah. wow. I know, right? It's gone by so quickly in, so in many ways. You know, it's, it's always it's always nice going back home, but it's always hard to leave too. It really is. Yeah, you know, I, I was a month is is not is not as long as people always think about it. You know, it's mm -hmm. as you get older, it's a smaller and smaller component of your life. It is, and it goes by faster, and I don't like that. I, yeah. I like to savor, you know, those good moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Disappeared. Just oh, there it went. <laughs> wow. Can we get a look at this sponge? That looks different than what I've seen recently. Zoom in. Interesting. Very interesting shape for, sp for sponges. It looks almost like a unstocked rosalid. What? Did, uh, unstocked what? Rosalid. Oh. But I could, could be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's got um, some interesting larger holes in it. Yeah. Is that what what uh, striking is unusual with that? 
I mean, it, it's it's pretty common. I mean, it's very common. Almost all sponges have holes in them. Uh, but this right. one, it looks like it has a, a particular type of plumbing system that is um, uh, maybe, or it's just, you know, it could just like have some puncture holes in it, but it looks like it's got um, like a plumbing system. Huh, yeah. okay. Like it's got two holes and like maybe there's a connection between, um, which is kind of interesting to me. Gotcha, okay. I think like with this one, um, honestly, I first thought it was a polyopagon, but it doesn't have that concave face on it. Cool. Yeah, and it's got a different base, I think. Yeah. yeah huh, that's interesting. Yeah, it is. It, uh, it's a. Oh, great. I'll come down a little bit. Okay. Moving on. Moving on? Okay. Yes, ma'am. My initial guess is a Roselid. Great. Um, I think that's probably right. It looks pretty similar to the other um, sort of, I want to say branching, but branching is the wrong word. Um, like the spicule? Yeah, branching. like the shape but between. Asako says that it's like Kalafika's head. Um, yeah. huh. that's, that's what um, stood out to stood out to her. It did look pretty similar. Yeah. Because Kalafika's and she she's warning it's not ID, but yeah. uh, she's noting a similarity there. Mm -hmm. By the way, Rosella is very hard to Google because I keep coming up with um, <laughs> Italian markets. <laughs> 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 The Atalanta camp is just awesome. Yeah, it is. I love seeing yeah. the view of Hercules mm -hmm. beneath it, along like the geological features. So. Zoom in. Yeah, coming from the opposite direction on that, sometimes uh, the still cam picks up Atalanta in the shots, and it's it's just really cool having that kind of mm -hmm. that, that light mm -hmm. in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Another pretty looking bamboo. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, look, I think it's got a Tina 4 on it too. Yeah. Is that a nodal branching that I'm seeing? I think so. It looks like maybe. Yeah, see like right there? Yeah. Yeah, and I can yeah. see it here as well. Oh, yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, and there. Here. <laughs> we both touched yeah. it at the same time. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Not so good. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. Yeah. So that is a nodal branching um, bamboo. Science team getting a little excited about the Tillistrator. Yeah. Both going in. <laughs> marking it up. Guilty as charged. You know, I, I tend to love, like, really saturated, like, rich colors. Uh, it's just kind of the thing that appeals to my brain, but I, I can't help but love the really delicate colors you get with these bamboo co corals. Yeah, they're, oh, they're so, so translucent almost, yeah. but yeah. just that color just softly shines through. The muted pastel. And it glows through, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these kinds of gorgeous are just so, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, saka has been saying it's been a Chrysogorgid heavy dive uh, yeah. prior to this. I mean, I've noticed definitely, with especially these uh, Chrysogorgid. I think these are Chrysogorgid geniculata we are seeing a lot of. Okay. They're just stunning. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of uh, sponge skeletons too. I was noticing that. We've got, and some of them look like Walteria, and some of them look like um, Perea's sponge. Yeah, definitely. Um, just kind of interesting. So, signs of change. We have uh, viewers tuning in from six out of seven continents. 
You can get a quick wow. message down to your friends in Antarctica. Let them know. Or uh, <laughs> ooh, do we know anybody? Do we know anybody in Alberta right now? Ken. Guaranteed. I feel like Ken does. Oh, you went yeah. to Antarctica too before, Dan. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. So cool. How was that experience? It's a, my favorite. My favorite swim I've ever had. <laughs> swim? Oh my nice. god. You swam? Swam in Antarctica. Oh. <laughs> Sounds a little chilly. Just my boardies, that was it. Oh my gosh. Wow. I Amazing. called bull. Oh, I got video <laughs> proof. I got video proof. I believe oh it. God. I believe it. I believe it too. There are some parts of Antarctica that do warm up a little bit, so I believe it. <laughs> I'm part marine mammal. There you go. <laughs> well, I, that I, sounds real. I, I used to swim in Lake Superior. Oh, Ooh. that gets cold. That does get cold. It's really cold. Just haven't been up there in a while. Also, my cold tolerance uh, is not what it used to be. Uh huh. Five years in Hawaii kind of <laughs> saw to that. <laughs> yeah, you put a jacket on when it's 70 degrees, right? No. Uh, that's where I'm trying to resist putting a jacket on because it's 70 degrees. <laughs> guilty. I'm guilty of this. <laughs> also guilty as I put my jacket on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Although, to be fair, 70 degrees inside a building can get a little chilly sometimes. But, um, yeah, any colder than that inside, and I'm just like, nope, jacket on. We'd outside like if I'm... Oh, sorry. No, 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 nothing. Oh. Uh, outside if you're moving around, it's easier to stay warm. Yeah. yeah. We just like to be cozy, Dr. Val. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with being cozy. Right. Exactly. You and your I cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's that time of year in the warm parts of the country where we start imagining it's fall. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. just fool ourselves into thinking it. You have to in St. Mm -hmm. Pete. No, well, no. it is. it is getting into later September. I started doing that before I came here, and I was like, it's mm -hmm. August, but like, I'm going to go get myself something pumpkin-y, you know? <laughs> oh, what do we have over, oh, over there? Another? I want to say that was Sorry? another sea spider. It, it's behind the rock. I think it's hiding from us. Yeah. It's, but yeah, it looked like it might have been a sea spider. It might come out the uh, other it side. Was, it was one of those decorator crap. Oh. Yeah, it kind of oh. like oh. One with the anemone on her back. Nice. Yeah, I think it's a little scared of us. Yeah. Sorry, crab friend. We were a bit bigger What's than that, that is. What's that right there? See right there on the bottom Moving on in like yeah. the, sh the shadow. Go down a little bit, Rob. Down, 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 down. See that little green thing right there in that little crevice? It's hard to see, yeah, but it I can, I can see it. It's like moving right there, yeah. Might be it's moving where? Toward right the bottom right left corner. Yeah, bottom it's left like in the shadow left. and it's moving. Yeah. Yeah, now that. it's center. Yeah, that thing right there. It, it like undulates, thing? yeah. Aliens, maybe. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> it, it was moving like it. Was. Oh yeah, it's yeah. it's barely moving. Is Are you sure it's not just like responding to our uh, uh, yeah. prop wash? Maybe. Okay. But just me and Catalina both saw it, so I was like, oh, that is moving. <laughs> yeah, no, I I saw it move just just a little bit. It was very subtle. Let's see if it's still there. I can see evidence of some sort of uh, bottom feeding critter or another next to that coral too. Holothurian maybe. By the things left behind. getting pretty close to waypoint five along this ridge. If you've uh, missed a number of our previous dives on the Ala Amwana Kaiuli expedition and A154 on board exploration vessel Nautilus, you can go to nautiluslive.org or yeah, check fish. out the Nautilus Live YouTube page. For all kinds of highlight videos including the dives we were able to do on the wrecked aircraft carriers from Battle of Midway, as well as another uh, many other Hello. biological highlights, and a great video featuring the amazing Where partnership between yeah. Ocean Exploration he Trust and Papa there, Hanau right? Mokuakea. Yeah, he, he did. Is that a, what, how do you say, mac macro, macroidae? Macurid. Macurid, grenadier, rat tail. All three. Thank you. 
Yeah, so speaking of rocks. <laughs> yeah, any good rocks? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not in the market to pick one up. I was just looking at rocks and thinking about rocks that I was cutting today. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we, we picked up a, a rather large piece of a uh, uh, pillow basalt a couple of dives ago, and uh, um, quite large, and I managed to uh, 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 chisel a couple of pieces off of it, and uh, uh, Hannah and I were cutting these open today. It was one of the last ones we uh, we cut open, and that ended up being a pretty neat rock. Uh, oh, yeah. We were very happy with that one. Yeah, it's got a it, it's a, looks relatively well preserved, and it's got a lot of uh, clinopyroxene and a lot of uh, hornblende in it. Hornblende slash uh, 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 amph bowl. And uh, that's, that's not something you see super often, but you do see it out here. And uh, it's a little bit more of an evolved melt, most likely, but uh, that'll be one of those really, really lovely geochemistry rocks. Nice. So we can both get a really solid age date on that and uh, uh, um, ID of uh, mantle origin. Nice. My gosh, there's a lot to go around. So you, you said a couple names of things in there that I, I think one was like a horn Edward, Beam, blot, <laughs> horn blend, <laughs> horn blend, and something that started with an A, maybe. Could you describe oh, some of the differences decorator. between those by any chance? Sure. Yeah. Um, so, clinopyroxene. There was crab. Yeah. <laughs> We're just scaring off all the crabs too. today. I kind of feel bad. Sorry, crab friend. Yeah. Um, so, clinopyroxene is a is a pretty common phase that we look for, and we 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 find that fairly frequently in these rocks. Uh, it's a uh, type of uh, magnesium and iron silicate. And in uh, these rocks, generally uh, magnesium dominant. It's what we call a mafic mineral. Uh, so you find it in uh, rocks that are correspondingly uh, very high in uh, overall uh, uh, magnesium and iron. Um, so it's, it's a pretty common phase that precipitates out of uh, basaltic melts. And then um, uh, hornblende and amphibole, you can uh, since, since we can't really I, I, ID the specific uh, flavor of those uh, in, uh, out here in the field, um, th those terms can kind of be used uh, interchangeably. Um, okay. Uh, but um, yeah, hornblende is uh, another uh, mafic mineral. Uh, it's also uh, a uh, silicate, although a different silicate structure um, that incorporates uh, a lot of magnesium and iron. And uh, it, it actually has a uh, an interesting uh, chemical structure in that it can incorporate a lot of other uh, elements too, like certain uh, certain other trace elements that we can uh, 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 get a lot of information about these rocks from in the lab. Um, hmm. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> uh, there, there's some geologists who um, perhaps irreverently um, call uh, hornblende a garbage can uh, mineral because you can put a lot of different elements into those uh, in, into some of those ion spaces in uh, uh, the mineral structure of hornblende. So, um, yeah, we, we like seeing those for a lot of reasons because they, they can uh